Good day, everybody. This is Chris back again at the Ancient Scholar, and I hope this finds you all doing well. And we're going to continue on our series of uh, videos that uh, stem from the concept of item analysis. And the next topic I think we're ready to discuss is the topic of item discrimination. So when we talk about item discrimination, what we mean is how well can an item, can a test question differentiate between a high performer and a low performer? High performer versus low performer. So how well can a test question differentiate students who seem to grasp or seem to have a deep grasp of the concept and understand it well versus students who have a very poor or ill-defined grasp of the whatever concept we happen to be testing. That's what we mean by high performers and low performers. Okay, so the primary, the primary quantitative uh, concept behind discrimination is something known as the index of discrimination, or I'll just abbreviate that, the ID, the index of discrimination. So how do we get the index of discrimination? Well, it's kind of a, what I look at it as a three-step process. So step number one okay, is we need to grade each student. Okay, so we grade the exam. So grade. And then we arrange or we rank uh, the students from lowest to highest grade. And that will, that will enable us to identify the uh, poor or the low performers and the high performers. Okay, so we rank them after we grade them. We rank them from low to high. For example, let's say I have 10 students, okay? And um, 10 students take a test. And so student number one got the lowest score. He or she got a 20%. And then student number two ended up getting another 20% on the exam. And then student number three got a 42%. And number four ended up uh, getting a 68%, we'll say. Number five ended up getting a 72%. Number six ended up getting an 84%. Number seven ended up getting an 88% on the exam. Number eight ended up getting a 94%, and I'm being rather arbitrary here. Uh, number Student number nine ended up getting a 98%, and then student number 10 ended up getting a 100%. Okay, so those are our scores ranged from lowest to highest. And then what we do from, from this, so this is step one, um, still part of step one, um, all of this falls under the umbrella step one, is I need to identify the low and high performers. And traditionally what we do is we take approximately the bottom or the lowest 27% Okay, of the students, and that group is what we would call the low performers. All right, this is kind of a, a number that has it, tr always been traditionally used. It's somewhat arbitrary, but it tends to work fairly well. Um, we could make it a little higher, a little lower, but uh, 27 or, or right around 27%. So in this case, uh, we would probably pick the lowest three students because that would be the closest to 27 percent so these three students one two and three that scored a 20 percent a 20 percent and 42 percent would fall into the category of the low performers and then i do exactly the same thing i would take approximately oops, i would take approximately the top 27 percent okay of my performers, so that'll be the top three scores here, the 8, 9, and 10, the 94, the 98, and 100, and they would be what we call 
the high performers. Okay, so now that we have identified the students who um, are the low performers and we've identified the students who are the high performers, what we need to do is we need to compare how these two groups did. And so what we need to do is we need to then go back and rely on our ability to calculate the difficulty of index, uh, the index of difficulty or um, the difficulty. And so that is what I consider step two. Okay, so step one, we arranged, uh, ranked them from lowest to highest score. And from that, we differentiated our bottom uh, 27%, our top 27%, and they became our low and high performers, respectively. And then step two is what we need to do is we need to calculate. Okay, we need to calculate the item difficulty. Okay, for each group. Okay, using only the students in those groups. Okay, so it, this is a special way of calculating item difficulty. So we are not going to use uh, the middle of the road students, so to speak. We're only going to use the, the, the low performers and the high performers. So then what we're going to have to do is you're going to have to go back through and so let's say that I have test question number one. I would need to calculate the item difficulty of that question um, for all of the low performers. And then I would also need to calculate the item difficulty for all of my high performers. All right. I would not use the entire group like we did when we just calculated the overall difficulty. So we calculate, so this is test question number one, and then question number two, three, four, and so on and so forth, right? And we only use the low performing group and the high performing group, all right? And then finally, so that's step number two, all right? And then step number three is the last part of the process of just calculating the, the index of discrimination is we take the high performing okay the high performers whatever that difficulty the difficulty was that we calculated for each of the items Okay, whatever that number is, we would subtract from that the difficulty that we calculated for the low performers. All right. So for example, item number one, let's say I got a, I calculated a difficulty of, uh, for my high performers, my high and my low, and let's say that item number one was 0 0.8. And then in the low performing group, it was 0 0.2. So 0 0.8 less 0 0.2 is going to equal 0 0.6. And 0 0.6 would be the index of discrimination. for that specific problem, all right? So that's how we calculate an item's index of discrimination um, is we have to, again, we have to identify our low and high performers, and then we calculate the item difficulty for the high performers and the item difficulty for the low performers, and then we subtract um, the low performing difficulty from the high performing difficulty and whatever that number is is our index of discrimination all right so i think i'll cut it off here and i will do a subsequent video discussing how once discussing the implications of the index of discrimination more specifically what does the index of discrimination tell us about an item 
Well, what it tells us is how well the item differentiates uh, between high and low performers. Uh, but more specifically, how can we correlate that value and what is a, is a quote unquote good value versus a poor value and what do these values mean? But we will pick that up on, in a subsequent video. Okay, hopefully you found that helpful and hopefully you understand how to calculate item discrimination. Okay, take care, and as always, thanks for hanging in there, guys.